Howdy, everyone. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. My name is Scott. Thank you for being here. Boy, we got a special guest tonight. Who is this young lady we have on camera? Hi, my name is Marie, and uh, I've, I've been around Scott for about a year now, a little over a year, and uh, looking forward to getting into my new van and going back to full time. She's got quite a story, Marie does. So just, Marie, thank you so much for being brave and coming on and sharing this story. I think a lot of ladies um, in particular get a special shout out because they're really kind of living on the edge and uh, you've been doing this a little while. So she's got a pretty cool story to share. Um, we're going to get some of her, her background here and her many RVs and she's impatiently waiting for an embassy RV. What'd you used to have? A Travato, I think, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> And she's got a park model. She's going to talk about that experience uh, briefly and then have some tips for you. So, Marie, thank you for, um, again, being here as our guest. You're um, very welcome, Dad. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, libation Live tonight. I've got some moonshine, Marie, that I found in Shiner, Texas at the Shiner Brewery. Um, I've never really had this before. So this is what bourbon looks like before it becomes bourbon. <laughs> so this will be kind of interesting. <laughs> I may have to put it in, I don't know, Kool-Aid or something to make it doable. But this day in history, you actually have some experience about this day in history. A big earthquake happened in Alaska. We're going to talk about that. Um, and then Marie suggested this, uh, a song by this uh, artist, Don Sanders, about that big day in 1964, right? Yep. Didn't know there was a song about the earthquake but <laughs> that's pretty cool that's what we do here is um, learn together this is our format if you can help us out with the questions three stars and then your three question marks before your question that helps me find it more readily and we want to get it answered uh, let us know where you're watching from uh, kind of an international sensation around here and if we got mj uh the security lady in the walmart parking lot it's good to see you, ma'am. Uh, she came out and assured me that there was no overnight parking. I'm like, no problem. I got my YouTube show and I'll be out of here. So MJ, if you're watching from your security car, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I subscribed to her channel. It's um, cooking, no no G, cooking with MJ. Um, she's um, got a budding uh, YouTube channel. We always like to support those. Um, <laughs> were you a big cook in your van, Marie? I plan to try to cook in my van. We'll see how okay. how it's going to go. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, we got a number of events coming up over the next month and a half or so. My website lists all this stuff, which is really cool. Uh, this very Friday, Marie, we got Terry Minix VP at Embassy RV is going to do a live stream tour of uh, the Dolphin, um, the ProMaster chassis. So they're really proud of those. Uh, a lot of people choose transit. We'll talk about your transit in a minute, but that's gonna be live. Join us for that. It's um, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time this Friday. So mark the calendar, uh, do that. And this is brand new, brand new, brand new. And I am so excited about this. Um, we're gonna be doing three live streams on Friday, April 5th from Warsaw, Poland. Am I gonna be there? But Peter from Rover Vans is gonna be there. So we're doing live streams from the European camper caravan is like what they call class B RVs over there. We're doing three different streams. Marie, you ever been to Poland? I have never been there. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to seeing Peter's uh, streams. He, he, he kind of got the bug at the uh, Super Show in Tampa this January. He was uh, he and I are uh, like roving van tour guides uh, the whole the whole couple, three days. So he's going to be doing that from there. Um, and we're going to do, this is kind of a, a, a screenshot of the um, camper van show. So if you want to take a picture of that quick and then join or visit that um, URL for that uh, RV show, European RVs generally are pretty cool. Um, if you've seen anything about those. Uh, so join us for that. Uh, we're doing uh, three streams, um, eight, nine, and 10 central for about a half hour. So uh, we're super excited about that. Uh, Marie and I've been to Warsaw. It's actually a pretty cool country. It's a really hard language to. It's like Vietnamese. It doesn't look or sound anything but spelled like. Um, but the food's amazing. So much history. Oh my gosh. And um, but wait, there's more. Uh, he's actually going over to work on his accessory business, um, a manufacturing plant over there. And we're going to do a live stream from the factory tour of the Vandermoon Van Gear on Wednesday, April 10 at eight in the morning. So um, again, if you're uh, subscribed to the channel, you should be getting notifications of these. If not, these are listed on my website. 
um, it's pretty cool. Really excited. He's super excited, actually. So kind of cool, huh, Murray? It's very cool. New van, hmm, new gear. <laughs> <laughs> and they make them for transit. And uh, this is, again, it's a factory tour, and this is kind of what it is. And it's just great stuff. Uh, we're really excited. Uh, speaking of excited, we've got our first of our two monthly uh, Patreon Zoom chats on April 6th at noon central. You can go to that URL there and get all the information. If you're not familiar with Patreon, um, it's exclusive content for subscribers at $0, $10, and $20 levels. Um, and we're growing like crazy, and that's what you get for uh, those types of levels. So Marie's a Patreon uh, true believer. So thank you, Marie. Appreciate that. It's always a delight to have you on our Zoom chats. It's We had a lively discussion. I, I don't think you were there this last one. But, I wasn't. Uh, totally spaced it, we, it out. <laughs> no, you're fine. Yeah, I, I try to send a note out. Um, and we ended up talking about was jury duty in the context of van travel. How do you deal with it? I shared uh, my recent experience and um, a couple others experience. Uh, then we talk about mail. How do you do mail forwarding? So we really help people travel better, smarter, easier in their camper vans in a Zoom chat that's not publicized out elsewhere. So if you want to do that, go to that URL there. Be a delight. And our big uh, uh, van brie coming up uh, is uh, the Weird Wild West in Bisbee, Arizona, about an hour south of um, Tucson. And Marie, we did this together with a bunch of crazy people like us, right, last year? <laughs> yes, we did. It was fantastic. I'm so sad I have to miss it this year. It's, it's yeah, it, well, we're going to miss you for sure. But um, it, go to that uh, URL there, weirdwildwest.net. You buy a ticket from them. And um, we got quite a few folks coming, which is going to be great. Uh, just a couple last announcement before we get into Marie's story. And we do want to have your questions. Um, so get your questions coming in. We've got, I see a few in here already. This is great. Uh, but before we get into Marie, just have to thank our sponsor for this segment of What's Up Wednesday. This is Sunshine State RVs. And um, they are in Gainesville, Florida. You may know that. Uh, this is a great area of Florida because you don't have to go all the way south. They're kind of up there high so you're not taking this huge drive. Um, while I didn't buy my van there, they've serviced my van a couple of times. So I, And I really believe in what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And many of you have bought your vans from them. Um, what makes them, I think, special is they only do vans. And uh, that's a pretty big deal. Some of the best vans on the market, pretty groovy. Here's a quick cheat, cheat on why Sunshine State RVs. Yeah, detailed walkthrough that will take as much time as you want. System demos of the RV systems. They put you up at a campground for two nights, and then you can come back the next day and get all your questions answered. You didn't get the first go around. They have a fly and drive program, uh, Marie, if you weren't aware of this, where they can uh, uh, reimburse you for your airfare, leaving your home base, picking up your van at Sunshine, and then driving your van back. Um, if you don't want to do that, they'll actually deliver your van to your doorstep for free. Pretty cool. You get a one-year Harvest Host membership, free technical phone support, super great. And one of the greatest things is guaranteed service employment in the, uh, within five days, uh, which is really kind of special in the uh, industry. If you already have your van, uh, they're doing a lot of mods now, including Rover Van Gear, which is in the back of mine. That's that circle there, which comes from Rover Vans and Peter. And you'll be seeing some of that at the... Um, in the Poland uh, live streams. Pretty excited about that. Uh, bonus, of course, is uh, scan this QR code and then uh, complete the contact me form and you and I can have a Zoom about your van, your, your private discussion, just me and, and you. And uh, just fill this out. We collect information from Embassy, or from Embassy, from Sunshine State RVs and they will, um, I've got a couple of you in the queue. So appreciate that. And just speak, thank, uh, thank you and a shout out to Sunshine State RVs. And they are going to be a, a, a service depot for Embassy Marie. So we're super excited about that. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Marie. Okay. Um, here's what we're going to talk about. Tell us a little bit about your, your backstory. You have a super interesting background, I think, and uh, the floor is yours to kind of introduce the folks if they haven't camped with you. Like, we've decided we've camped together at least half a dozen times in the last year, right? Yeah. Crazy. So, um, hey, just a little bit of background um, on you, and um, we'll talk well, about... I retired in 2013. In 2012, I retired from the Federal Bureau of Prisons, so I was sort of a correctional worker first, but I wasn't the executive staff. Um, anyway, when I retired, I took a year and became a consultant to the Afghan prison system. And I worked over there with their finance and their human resources sections. 
Um, and I mostly did that so I could buy an RV. So my husband and I uh, bought an RV and we started doing some traveling, camp hosting, and we took a trip to Alaska in it in 2015. So we, we got around quite a bit. And uh, anyway, we're, we're going to get into more of my RV experience here in a little bit. But uh, anyway, I just have always enjoyed traveling my entire life. And the thought of sitting in one place for too long gives me hives. <laughs> <laughs> totally understand. Totally understand. Raise your hand if you understand what she's talking about there. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. These days, if I don't need navigation, I've been there too long. All right. <laughs> Um, okay, just thanks again for sharing your story. I think it's it's just so cool. So you mentioned RVs. Let's um, show this to the folks because uh, you've kind of run the gamut uh, and you kind of got into it, I don't know, at an early age. What are we looking at here? <laughs> uh, this is a picture of my mom and dad and me, that little girl over there on the right-hand side of the picture, and my uncle. Uh, when I was three years old, my folks loaded my brother, my sister, and I, and, and the three of them into that Volkswagen bus and left Washington State and headed to Alaska because that was my parents' dream was to live in Alaska. And so although I can't tell you exactly where this picture was taken, I believe it's somewhere on the Alaska Highway, uh, but I have no idea where. But anyway... Yeah. Um, you see the tent that's kind of thrown up on the top of the bus there. And I believe that's where my parents and uncle slept and maybe my brother. I'm not sure. I know my sister and I slept in the bus and uh, that little old bus was my first camper van. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of instilled in you early on. Uh, I totally get it. Um, and, and Maurice, we're going to talk about this kind of throughout the, the hour tonight is, um, you experienced the, uh, 1964 earthquake in, in Alaska, Southern Alaska, and have some pretty distinct memories about that. That's happened this day in history. That is correct. And in fact, that was kind of why when you gave me dates to choose, I picked this one because it, it was a big event in my life. I was five years old and I'm not going to say I remember everything about it. I remember the weather was chilly. Um, I thought it was really cold, but I actually looked up the weather that day and it was like a high of 31. So it was hardly sub-zero or anything, but it was cold. Um, I can just remember my brother and I were laying on the living room floor. The earthquake started at 537 and we were watching a TV show called Fireball XL5. And we were watching the show and all of a sudden the power went out and the TV shut off and we were like, what in the world is going on here? That wasn't all that unusual in 1964 for the power to go out. But uh, within 10 seconds or so of the TV going off, we started feeling the rolling of the earthquake. And of course, being five and having no clue what it was, I ran to my dad who grabbed me and held me while we stood in the doorway of the house in case we had to evacuate if it were to collapse. And I can remember screaming to my dad, what is going on? I just had no clue. Um, my sister had just had surgery for a ruptured appendix and she's crawling out of bed, can barely walk. And it was, it was a crazy time and the earthquake lasted for not quite five minutes. It was a long duration wow. and it was where I was on the Kenai Peninsula was pretty rural, thankfully. Um, unfortunately, there were over 130 people who were killed either by falling buildings or uh, mostly people were killed by the tsunamis and they killed people all the way down to Crescent City, California um because the tidal waves were so big but it was an amazing time we went for several days with no electricity because i believe the cable between the peninsula and anchorage was severed so it was it was kind of a bumpy time and if folks get a chance listen to the song because it's actually a very good 
um, synopsis of what the earthquake was like. He did a great job. And I can remember learning this song when I was probably six years old. And uh, there's a line in it that says, uh, devastation all around. And I remember somehow in my little six-year-old brain, um, I called it devil station. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's my quip about that song. And that's why it just kind of has a, a special meaning to me. Because 100%. Yeah, if anybody's lived through a natural disaster like that, it's never leaves your mind. Mine was the Mount St. Helens inter, uh, eruption in 1980. Um, so uh, shifting gear from uh, earthquakes to RVs. So you and her husband had a uh, big old class A. What's the story here? In 2014, we found this used Georgie Boy Lando uh, for sale in the Indiana area, not very far from where we were living. And we went down and looked at it. It was a diesel pusher. It had a 300 Cummins in it. And the engine had only about 100 hours on it because it had to be replaced because the original engine had a cracked block. So we decided to buy it. Um, it actually, that engine was perfect. It purred. Like I say, we took that rig to Alaska in 2015 and it served us so well. It got 12 miles to the gallon, if you can believe that. That thing was 36 feet long. <laughs> 12 that's, miles to the gallon. That was impressive. That's actually pretty good <laughs> considering. Yeah, what it's really, doing. really good for something that big that weighed 20,000 pounds. That's insane. Um, and, and we liked it. Uh, it was very ugly and dated on the inside. We ultimately brought it up here to Elkhart to a company that redid the interior on it. Kept it for a couple more years and then decided that it was at that point, 15 year, or 16 years old, pushing 17 years old, maybe it was time to find it a new home. So we traded it in and we switched to a 32 foot fifth wheel. So even though that's shorter, uh, more living space, brand spanking new 2018 grand design. And we bought the, the pickup to tow it with and Away we went, we decided we were selling the house and Dennis and I went full time in 2018. And we took off and we so loved being full time. And unfortunately, in late 2019, we decided to come back to Indiana and visited our doctors and our dentists and did all those things that full timers do at a location that they're familiar with. And he uh, had to get a colonoscopy and it didn't go well. He was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And uh, so anyway, we took off in that fifth wheel, headed down to North Carolina, knew uh, some pretty good doctors down at the University of North Carolina. And so we went down there and he started doing treatment while we were there in North Carolina, I ended up, well, we got an opportunity to switch sites at the RV park we were in. We went from this little skinny kind of yucky site to they offered us this beautiful site. And so we decided to, to take it. The only problem was Dennis was in the throes of heavy chemotherapy and he was about as weak as a two day old puppy. So he really couldn't do anything. And so I had to get everything prepped inside and out, hook it up, get everything going, get it moved, put it and And now Dennis did park it. I didn't have to do that, but he did park it. And uh, then I unhooked it, set it up, did everything. And uh, by the time we got done with it that day, I said, you know, I don't want to do this by myself anymore. And so I started looking for something smaller. And so we thought that we might want a Winnebago view or Navion. I love the looks of them. I was watching all the RV sites and we went over and we looked at them and we drove one 
and the body role was just not something I cared for. It, it, they definitely have, you know, that big old box is so much wider than the actual chassis. So I didn't care for the body roll of the Navion views. Um, so then we started talking about looking at something else. And uh, we looked at a lot of camper vans. And I have to say, Dennis hated them all. Every one of them. <laughs> like, I want nothing to do with a van. We got to do a little bigger than a van. Until one day we went back over to the Winnebago dealer, which was only about a half an hour from where we were staying. And we looked at the view again and it's just like, nah, it just doesn't feel right. And on the lot, there was a Winnebago Travato. And I said, we've never looked at this one. And so we walked in to the K model, which is what we ended up with ultimately. And he looked around and he said, you know, this doesn't feel like other camper vans. It's so open. It's big. I said, I think I could do this one. And that's all it took. I, I mean, I knew I wanted a van anyway. I, I don't know how to explain it. I just, I knew a van was going to be right. And so we bought the, the Travato out of North Canton, Ohio. I found it online, found a good deal. And uh, we drove up to North Canton, rented a car, drove up to North Canton and brought it home. And so then we had a fifth wheel and a camper van. What more can you ask for? Um, we eventually moved out to Arizona uh, because we wanted to change treatment facilities. And so we decided to go to cancer treatment centers in uh, Goodyear, Arizona. So we got out to Arizona and we took both campers out there. So we had the truck to drive for a vehicle or we drive the Travato a lot, even back then as our car. And uh, so we stayed in the campground the first winter we were there. And in about November, early December, Dennis says, let's go look at park models because we were in the Casa Grande area. We knew there were a lot of uh, RV resorts that had park models. And we had one that we had stayed in in a previous year when we were doing full-time travel and decided that we really liked that little RV park. So we were looking seriously at a park model in there. And then we went to a different RV park and it was December. The park models were rented out. We were able to go see them because they wouldn't be occupied till January, but they were going to be rented out for January, February, and March. So we couldn't take possession until April 1st, which was perfect for us because we had a lease on our RV site till April 1st at the other RV park. So we uh, found the one we liked the best. We got the tape measures out. We made sure that the Travato would fit under the awning because <laughs> that was the deal killer there. If it didn't fit, we wouldn't buy it. And we're pretty sure it would fit, but it's like, can we bring it over and drive it under there? We've got to make sure. So we did, and we bought a park model and made that our home base. And so after we did that, we sold the truck and the fifth wheel and yeah. only had the Travato. And it's one of those of your van life miracle things. I know after we did it, Dennis said that I don't know why we didn't do this sooner. This is so much better <laughs> than that great big thing. And this is us sitting up by Camp Verde, Arizona. Um, the Travato wouldn't tow the Jeep, so I usually drove the Jeep and Dennis would drive the van. And that way we had a way to uh, go explore, especially that's pretty close to Sedona. So we did a lot of uh, four wheeling and driving around back roads and getting her dirty. But it's so great that you were able to do this with him in the van. Um, a lot of folks aren't able to do that one you know, before and after type of thing. And you kind of Jeep camp on occasion also, is that right? I did. After we went to Bisbee, um, Dennis passed away in October of 22. 
And so when we went to Bisbee last year, uh, I was so inspired looking around at all those crazy people in Bisbee and the rigs that they had built and what they could do that I decided to go home and I did a build for my little Jeep so that I could camp in it. And I do have a build, it's removable, um, so I can sleep in that little two-door Wrangler. It's a good thing I'm not tall. I'm only 5'4". <laughs> <laughs> that makes it slightly more doable. Um, it's, such, it's, such an it's such an inspiration. So um, we're gonna talk about embassy here in a minute. We're gonna take a pause um, and, and answer some questions. Um, but before we make that transition, just kind of share with us what got you looking for yet another van. Um, and you like best, I think I heard, is um, open floor plan on the K model. But what kind of got you looking for a new van? Then we'll, we'll take some questions and do embassy. The uh, Travano that I had was a straight K. At the time that we decided to buy it, I didn't think I wanted to spend the extra money to get the Volta system like you have. Um, it did not take very long after about a year and a half or two years of listening to the noisy generator on the Travato that I had, I really did want a more powerful power system. And so I made it work. I really did, but I didn't like being that person that had to run that noisy generator. It just wasn't my thing. And so, uh, that was probably the main reason. If I would have bought a Travato with the Volta, I probably would still be so driving it. Very cool. Um, let's take some questions. Marie, how are we doing on time? Pretty good. Um, so Bev's got a question. I'll let you answer this. I might chime in too. So Bev wants to know, interested in knowing what is a good roadside assistance plan and the reasoning behind the choice. Did you have a roadside assistance plan? I did. Um, we actually had Good Sam roadside assistance uh, when we were full time and we used it once. We were out between Van Horn, Texas and the New Mexico border. So we were kind of in no man's land and one of the reflection tires blew. Mm. And I was driving the van at the time. Dennis was pulling the truck. We always traveled with walkie talkies so we could reach each other easily. And he said, I just blew a tire pull over. So we called roadside assistance. It was a balmy 100 degree day out there in West Texas. Um, again, great to travel with another RV because we just got pulled over and I fired up the uh, air conditioner in the Travato and, and the generator. <laughs> and we sat in there because it took about an hour and a half for roadside to get there. Um, good Sam, we were good Sam members. It was not terribly expensive. And they did send a response out as fast as certainly could have been expected where we were for the remote area of I-10 we were on. Yeah, so. it gets pretty remote. I-10. Um, and I would just add to that, Bev, um, thank you, Marie, uh, that my insurance plan for the van, Progressive, includes roadside assistance that we've I've used several times, actually. Um, I'll probably uh, one up that with AAA, um, just so there's a couple options. Um, and to Marie's point, sometimes the, um, the assistance arriving at you varies greatly in timeliness. So if you have two programs going, whichever gets there first, you can cancel the other one that's on the way. Um, but I've been, um, just for peace of mind, because if, if you have a breakdown, I've had a breakdown on a serpentine belt once, which I got stranded in Houston. And the vans are big enough that you have to have I'm on a flat bed. You just can't get a regular tow truck. Um, so just uh, that, that's kind of the reason behind it is peace of mind and functionality to uh, the correct uh, service center. So um, I have one and I'm going to probably do triple A too. So good question. Um, and Peggy Marie's got a question here. We'll talk about this uh, Peggy in just a few minutes. When we get into the embassy meat of the matter. Um, you know, what are the key things about the embassy that helped you decide on this class B? So let's reserve that hang tight, Peggy. Um, I'm looking for the questions here, folks. Got a nice group in here tonight. Appreciate that. 
Um, Roads of Life wants to know the same thing. What do you like best about your embassy? <laughs> Wait till you see it. We got a video tour for you. She put a little tour together for us. Um, Jess is still having uh, problems down there. Um, if any of you talked to um, Neil and Britt today, they had a little bit of problem with their Travato um, in, in Florida. We're talking about that a different day, but uh, um, just want to see if we have questions here for Marie. Um, oh, Peggy's saying, great to meet you at uh, Peace Loving Vans. Uh, it was great. Everybody wants to know why Embassy. Okay, maybe we should just go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I see a question from uh, Sherry, maybe let's let's see. Um, so we're, she's uh, Marie's going to provide some tips on on travel safety and solo, um, but maybe high level. Marie, Sherry wants to know: Do you have any fears to get over before hitting the road? And what would you say to people to overcome their fear? Great question. Uh, I think we all have some fears. The, the main thing is to just always stay aware of your surroundings and listen to that voice in your gut, your head, wherever it's coming from. If it says, maybe you shouldn't do that, don't do it. Uh, there, there's always a risk. And just like nowadays, you probably should have your doors locked at your house when you're at home. Uh, you know. Just do simple things that'll protect you. As soon as you get inside your vehicle, lock the door. Just simple stuff. Yeah, so a common sense. The gut intuition, I think, is just um, so important, right? So let's, um, since a lot of questions are around MC, let's jump into this because uh, this is a, a congratulations again. It's it's pretty stunning. Um, so this is on the Ford Transit, right? And Marie provided some uh, uh, photos here. Um, so help us understand what what floor plan we're looking at. Cause typically these have two twin beds that can come together, but, oh, that's up everybody, <laughs> balloons. <laughs> Congratulations, Marie. Um, so can you show us what we're looking at here? Then we're gonna do a, a video tour that's about three minute video she'll walk us through. But what are we looking at here? Okay, the uh, thing that sold me about this floor plan is rather than having two beds, on the left, I've got this massive storage cabinet, which would normally be the other bed. And since it's only me, um, I have no need for an extra bed. And I do like to cook. I also am the world's biggest coffee snob. And I will tell you that a week ago, I splurged and bought myself the most amazing espresso machine that's going to sit on that counter beautifully. And Terry's even come up with a way to anchor it there for me. So it can just travel on there. But I love the fact that if I'm cooking, uh, because this has no propane, um, I'll be doing electric cooking on induction. And so I can cook on that big countertop. I'm not restricted to that smaller area by the sink. And so it gives me a lot more flexibility to do what I like to do. So well said. And let's kind of weave in why Embassy, you know, what, what inspired you versus getting a you know, 59KL um, this is looking toward the cab from the, the galley there, right? Yes. Yes. So maybe uh, kind of why embassy? Uh, I loved my Travato and my Travato treated me very well. Um, I think as a solo traveler, the KL was more space than I needed to, you know, I had one side set up as a sofa and one side permanently made as a bed, but I really didn't need all of that. That was almost wasted space. And by getting that cabinetry in the dolphin, I am no longer wasting that space. Now I can carry things that I want to carry uh, that I would have never had room for. I couldn't even keep an Instant Pot in my Travato because a six quart Instant Pot was just too big to put anywhere. It, it, there was not a cabinet in there it could go in. Um, silly things like that, just those are what took me away from it. And I think I've told you that if I would have gone with a Travato again, it would have been the Jeep, but I don't like the changes Winnebago made in 22. So that knocked the G out of contention for me. If I could get the older G like uh, you have with the 
the cool front sleeping area, work area, jump seat. That that would have been great, but they they took that away. So yeah, yeah. Tell me that about that. Got it. me out of the auto <laughs> mode, and most everyone else is just as I've heard uh, RV guy tell me. They research and duplicate the same things over and over again. Nobody's innovating these things, and. Uh, I think Embassy is trying to do some of the most innovative stuff I've seen without being a custom build. And they have controlled custom, so you can do some of these things, like we're looking at here for your, your electric bike storage, right? Um, right. And the countertops, probably the Embassy RV folks are like, mouths have dropped open because of the, the countertops. Let's, um, let's roll this video. Uh, let me shift gears here and have you kind of walk us through what we're looking at. Um, is this the beginning? Uh, please hold. I'm sorry, that's the end. There we go. So we're just stepping in. And I'll kind of pause here at certain points. Um, so again, this is on the Ford Transit. And that was kind of a big thing for you, if I remember right. All -wheel drive. Yeah, it was. Not that I have anything against the ProMaster. I just drove one for three and a half years. Uh, but the Transit is just a hair is longer. And so I get that extra space in the back for my bike so that my bike will be inside the van instead of hanging off the back and off being a back. target. And Marie, you had mentioned this is um, the bed. So clearly it's a convertible sofa to a bed. So does this power out? And then you tuck the bolster cushions right. in? Or? It does. I think it makes about a 36-inch bed when it's powered out all the way. If you just take the back cushions off, it's 24 inches. For me, I'm pretty small, so that is probably going to be fine for me. It's um, interesting, and the, and the, it, with the bolsters in at 36 inches, that's considerably wider than your Travato bed. Is that? Uh, yeah, it's about six inches wider. Yeah, which is a big deal. So, yeah. um, so we're just kind of traveling through again. The, the cabinetry is very different. There's no wood in an embassy RV. This is all marine grade vinyl and and uh, plastics. Um, I think we're going to see the microwave here, but we, we got to not remember or forget to talk about this countertop. So standard microwave. Yeah. Um, I didn't show the sink, but that sink is impressive. It's like 16 by 18 or something. It's eight inches deep. It's, you could hide a week's worth of dishes in there if you had a week's <laughs> worth of dishes. <laughs> So this is my favorite room in any van. Uh, that's the uh, pocket door. This is the bathroom we're looking at. Where's yeah. the toilet, Marie? Oh, they hide it. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> it's so great. So you got a couple options. One of them is not a traditional wet flush black tank, which your Travato had. Um, uh, which, which toilet system did you choose here? I went with the Lavio dry flush toilet. Um, I love the idea of the adult diaper genie. I think it's cool. Um, I could have gotten a composting toilet, but if I'm going to have to empty a pee jug, I might as well just pee in a jug <laughs> 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 and save that part of it. <laughs> at least the right. other part I don't really have to look at or deal with to speak of. Right. Yeah. I I, I got to use the um, system once and it was, it was pretty cool. Um, and um, let's see, I think we go back a little bit further. Those are your um, low point drains. This is the garage storage. Please notice how huge this is. It's an entire 18 inches. 18 wide and like the whole van height tall. And right? the width, yeah. The, the entire width of the van, but about 18 inches in depth. Which is so huge. So my e-bike will, I have a folding e-bike and it will definitely fit in there because my uh, handlebars fold down. Nice. This is the wardrobe. And again, I think if you look at a really craft builder, look at the plumbing and the wiring that's behind the cupboards and what have you, you see instantly a difference between the mass produced folks and somebody like Embassy. I mean, look at this circuit box. It's like a thing of artwork. <laughs> Do you think there's more storage in this than your Travato? Oh, 
double, easily double. double. Wow. My goal is not to figure it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally with you on that. So here you're kind of using your hand to give us a sense of depth. Yeah, if I kept the camera on it, it'd be even better. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you doing this. It's just those those drawers are massive. Uh, I was shocked how big they are. I'll have room for towels, clothes, dogs, cats, and <laughs> whatever else. And this is pretty cool here. I just love this idea of bulky items on top. Um, and then you got a, a that Italian fridge right in black. That's a van like yeah. miracle. That was, and it really just pops against those white cabinets. It's so cool. And they're really big. Yeah. I have more refrigerator space than I'll probably ever need. Especially coming from a K, which is like a dorm room one. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be like, wow, well, this is insane. You know, the K fridge hold, holds a lot. The problem is that it's very deep. So if you're not really careful, things go back there to grow into something that you'll never recognize. So more and drawers. Then the pantry here is not as wide as the linen slash clothes area, but there's still just a ton of storage there for. Um, whatever food. I don't think I'm going to starve to death anytime soon in there. No. Tell us about your um, countertops. This is embassy people are like, what? How'd you talk Terry into this? <laughs> and you know, it's one of those things that embassy found these, uh, I believe it's a granite composite type thing. Um, they are manufactured, but they actually have some granite to them. And it was shortly before my, uh, van went into production that they decided to switch the countertops and I had originally the colors I chose were black countertops with the white cabinets because I didn't want it to be too dark in there so I was as shocked as any embassy owner was when I walked in there and took one look at those those are absolutely the most stunning countertops I've ever seen including looking at Numar, King Airs, and everything else. These are just gorgeous. Yeah, and it's it, it's just stunning. Um, I can't yeah, wait to see think, it in person. I think they call it Midnight Galaxy because it looks like it's a, a galaxy almost. But, I love it. I yeah, love so it. do I. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that video. Um, it was um, really, really cool. Um, Let's uh, let's talk about the park model quick. You kind of talked about that, but let me just kind of flash this up on the screen so if people aren't familiar with it. Uh, let me change at the stage. There we go. So this is a park model, um, and and it was kind of a home base for you for a while. Yeah. And then, yeah. And, and my park model has a big awning that comes off the side that I was talking about. I had to be able to park. The van underneath but that really helped keep it out of the arizona sun which was brutal um but it was nice to have something that was a little better insulated than a fifth wheel and of course it was about uh i think it's 11 by 35 so right at 400 square feet so a little nice. room to roam um I say when you're dealing with an ill partner, he always felt bad if he couldn't sleep. And so in the fifth wheel, if one of you makes noise, the other one hears it. Once we got in the park model, of course, it was a lot more quiet and private. And he didn't feel like he was keeping me awake all the time. Yeah. So, and it ended up working out well for us. Well, just I'm um, so glad you got to experience um the van with you that's just so great uh let's take a, more, a few more questions so um on embassy so how did you learn about embassy well through you um <laughs> i believe when we were in bisbee you were telling us all about your partnership that you were going to be working with embassy or had been working with embassy and you were go waxing on about uh doing the factory tours and i have a son who lives just eight miles west of embassy 
the factory. So when I was up here last summer, I said, okay, I'm going to go take the factory tour because, you know, I'll let them know Scott sent me. I was trying to help you out a little bit. Let them know that, you know, we're out there. And, uh, yeah, that was, I had, I went in there having absolutely no plan at all to buy a van. <laughs> and I had no plan at all to buy a van through the entire tour until we got to a van that was at the very end of the assembly line. And might have been next to the last one on the assembly line. And it was the SS model. And I walked into that and my mouth fell open and I went, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to buy a van. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't, I didn't do it that day. I actually slept on it for a whole weekend before I uh, <laughs> went back on Monday and put the money down on it. <laughs> Great self-control. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, now, the van we saw is your van, but you're not picking it up for a couple weeks um, due to scheduling situations. And you're actually, I think, trying to sell, we'll be selling your park model. So, and you're going to go back into full-time van travel, but, right? Correct. So your van is finished and waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah, it is completed. And that is, uh, it's, it I be think so as good. of today, I actually own it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pick it up for a couple of weeks because I will be out of state or out of Indiana for a couple of weeks. So Justin's got a question here, Marie. Um, what was the main reason you went with Embassy? You kind of talked about that, but I'm excited or uh, curious to know how excited you are about their lithium system because it's a pretty powerful system. I am beyond excited for the lithium system. 920 amp hours is a massive amount of power for me. That reflection that we had, we had an 800 watt solar system put on the roof and we had 500 amp hours of uh, lithium phosphate batteries. So we could live off grid quite a bit uh, in that fifth wheel and 920 is almost double what we had in that big old fifth wheel, and I'm going to be in a very small van. So, <laughs> so cool. I'm so excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I bet you are. Let's see if we got Roads of Life's excited about Poland. Yeah, I'm really excited too because um, the European vans are so different. Uh, I was able to tour some vans while wow, November of 2019, a long time ago, um, and they're very different than American vans. Um, so, I'm really excited we were able to put this together with Peter. So, Put that on your calendar. It's going to be a, assuming everything works perfectly, which we're going to consider a van life miracle. Uh, here's Matt. He's excited for Bisbee. Uh, <laughs> uh, Peggy's giving a shout out to Scott's Patreon group. It's the best. I uh, love the travel tips and great people. Yeah, our Zoom is coming up um, just, uh, I think, April 6th, I think I said. Um, so go check that out. Um, um Let's see, Peggy's saying we called Nick today, hoping to get an electrical update there soon. Uh, assuming that's an embassy reference, I'm not sure. Um, there's endless saying Sunshine State RVs is awesome. Yes, they are. Um, somebody's horns going off back there. Let's see. Uh, oh, good question here from Georgia Jack. Uh, Marie, uh, hi, Marie. Is there anything that you will miss from the Travado that the embassy does not have? Ooh. Ooh. I don't. Maybe the only thing, and I'm not even sure this is a big thing, is I won't have any solar. And I did have a nice bit of solar on my Travado. So, um, but I've got the DC to C DC charging. Terry assures me that that will probably take care of everything I need. And uh, so at this point, I don't think there's going to be anything I'm missing that I had in the Travato. Black um, tank? Won't miss that at all. <laughs> Not at all. No, I probably wouldn't either if I'd love you. Um, and I just want to, you, you, you are a guest today, but Neil and Britt have had a really tough day. If you're not, um, tune into their YouTube channel or their Instagram stuff. Um, they had a pretty catastrophic situation with their Travado parked at home base in Florida. We'll see if we can get some more information about it. Um, it, it kind of burst into flames today. So um, our thoughts are with you, Neil and Britt. Um, 
they're in an echo full time, but they're a long way from Florida. So um, our thoughts are with you. Um, just looking for a few more questions. And then uh, uh, Matt saying thanks to, uh, great to hear your story. Great to see you. Um, thanks, Matt. Wish I were going to be in Bisbee with you again. I know, right? Uh, next year. Next year. So let's do this. How are we doing on time? Oh my gosh, many minutes. Um, this hour flies by. So let's do um, uh, let's do libation live quick, and then we want to get a couple tips from Emory on um, traveling safety from your perspective, and um, any tips for solo travelers, like getting rid of the extra bed. I mean, that's a huge thing, right? I mean, this yeah. summer room. Um, and let's see, where's my cursor guy? Here we go. So this is the uh, libation live tonight. Um, I found this at the Shiner Brewery in Shiner, Texas. Um, what is today? Wednesday, I guess, last week? I don't know. Um, this is what bourbon looks like before it gets aged. It's just corn whiskey, they call it. Um, I have no idea what this is like. It was not that expensive. It's not even shown on their website. Um, let me forward one here. It's 80... Oh, I thought I had the corn mash. It's really high corn content. Um, Marie, are you having any wine? Are you... Um, I'm just, just having sparkling water tonight. Good for you. Okay, I'm going to put just a teensy bit in here because this is either needs to be made into a Bloody Mary. Wow. Uh, it'll it definitely is. put hair on your chest, I think. Actually, it's not too bad. This is 45 <laughs> proof, I think. Um, man, it's really sweet like corn. Um, let me uh, get this. Where's the big screen, Scott, so people can see what's going on. Um, but this is again what vodka looks like or um, whiskey looks like before you age it and bourbon for that matter. Certainly prefer bourbon has a lot more depth and it's not too bad though. Um, so Bobby and, and Steve, he buys corn whiskey like this and he's been uh, aging it in small casks at his house. So maybe I'll save that for I think they're going over well, we'll seeing for the eclipse thing, but um, maybe I'll give that to him and he can um, surprisingly Steve Shiner version. I don't know. Pretty funny. <laughs> um, uh, let's do this day in history. Marie, you have to tell us a little bit about this. So this is kind of funny. So 26 years ago today, Viagra was approved for people of, you know what, uh, the first pill to be approved for that condition. Um, pretty funny. 26 years. Holy cow. 60 years ago, we talked about this earlier, the Good Friday earthquake, most powerful earthquake recorded in North America at that time. And maybe not since, right? I don't even think of uh, it. Yeah, that, it's the second largest earthquake since we've had seismology measuring in the world. And if you, you do, just to do a little bit of Wikipedia search on it, uh, it's like the, the lakefront or the, the coast wasn't lakes on the ocean drop. Was it like 19 feet or some crazy number like that it was just insane yeah in some places it went up a crazy amount but yeah portage and the area between uh anchorage and the peninsula where i was living dropped enough that they had to rebuild the highway up higher because the tide now came over the highway <laughs> Yeah, that's, <laughs> um, and then 138 years ago, 1886, which is kind of not that long ago, Geronimo, the Apache War surrendered to the U.S. Army, ending the main phase of the Apache Wars. That's not that long ago. Um, that stuff was still going on. It's pretty crazy. So that's what's this day in history. And we'll talk about our song of the week. And this is Don Sanders and the Alaskans. Uh, Marie, thank you for recommending this. Um, you can find this on Apple Music. I uh, saw Spotify, I think, too. And there's a YouTube that you sent me um, of this song. So spin this up tonight and, and just think about what those people went through. Um, pretty catastrophic. Thank you, Marie, for that suggestion. That's <laughs> so great. <laughs> and, uh, and it will be officially the uh, 60th anniversary in about an hour and 40 minutes. Wow. Um, it was at 5.36 p.m. Alaska Standard Time because we used to not go to daylight savings time till April or so. But, uh, yeah. So. That is so great. Um, so Peggy's saying, espresso. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will be at the embassy rally in June. My espresso machine will be there with me. <laughs> That's so great. Um, and then Gary's saying, uh, we were next to you, uh, 
next to your van today during our pickup. Looks great. <laughs> so great. Okay, um, I saw yours uh, yesterday when I was there, and I know Terry said you were that he thought it was being picked up today. So congratulations. Congratulations. That was super great, Greg. Renata, um, that's so great. Um, let's see, just a couple more things. Uh, Sherry says, uh, good jo job on the colors. So your splashy Thanks. color was actually the countertops, which is kind, kind of cool. Um, and Roads of Life comments, the, the biggest that's the biggest issue with the Class B market. Every, everyone wants in, but no one wants to spend the money to innovate. And that's a great distinction, well said. Um, I couldn't agree more. Um, and Peggy's like, that garage looks nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so explore the 50 has a question, Marie. Uh, do you uh, do you do anything to treat your fresh water tank? So maybe just to kind of explain what the water tank in the embassy looks like, because it's a little different than most tanks. Yeah, uh, the embassy has water bladders uh, or a water bladder. It holds about 25 gallons and don't quote me on this because there's probably people out there that know a lot more about these than I do at this point. But what I do know is Embassy put in a water purification system that we run once or twice a week to keep that water clean and safe to drink and use in our vans. Unlike the water system that I had in my Travato that once a year I had to drain and sanitize it with you know, bleach and, and those things. And I did that every year. It wasn't hard, but it's something you had to do. Uh, because otherwise, you got some really scary things. And I had a gravity fill on my Travato because the Ks have that gravity fill. So I could actually see down in my tank. And if there had been anything growing, I would have seen it. So that would not have been good. I wouldn't have liked that. So I'm excited with the embassy that we have a purification system we can regularly run and there won't be any of this flush in the tank once a year to try to clean it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and the whole it, ultraviolet purification, and it's, it's, it's a whole story in of itself. Um, got a couple more questions. We might just go a few minutes over. Um, Marie, just share with us a, a tip on travel tips. So harvest hose, navigation, what, what have you found over the years? You have so many types of RVs. I totally recommend harvest hose to anyone. I absolutely love staying at the harvest hose. I tend to not stay at the wineries and the breweries. I tend to go for unique places. I have stayed at a ukulele factory. I have stayed at a farm, a couple of farms. One was a buffalo farm. And when I went to Florida, I stayed at a place called uh, Turkey Hollow, which was more of a rescue operation. Almost all their animals were rescues that they allowed to live on their farm. They had three pot belly pigs. Um, they had a blind dog and another rescue dog. And and a turkey, a great big male turkey who <laughs> was a hoot. And his name was Tommy. <laughs> of course. And, you know, Harvest Toast is phenomenal. Uh, so I would say it's well worth the money. And I, I just love, I stayed at a lot of museums. I stayed at a museum in Tallahassee. I stayed at one in Dade City uh, and all over the country. So Harvest Host is a definite, and then um, I'm kind of a dry camper, and I like free camping. I consider it a challenge to not pay for camping, <laughs> and so I'm a big BLM Forest Service land girl, and I've ended up in some unusual places. I was out in Texas in the Sam Houston National Forest, and the first place I went ended up being a paid campground and there were no sites available to get. So I went and looked on my app for another one, found another uh, forest service trailhead. This time it was pitch black when I got there, which is against my religion. I don't like to drive and go park and find places to go in the dark, but I ended up having to. And I saw a fifth wheel off in one area 
and saw they were parked there and I found a nice big opening that I could park my van in and nobody was around me and I slept like a baby. There was some traffic there that night, but nobody bothered me. No, I really didn't hear much at all. And when I got up in the morning and the daylight comes out, I'm camping there with about six other people, not in the specific spot where I was, but all around me, there were at least six other units that pulled in over the night and camped there as well. And it was awesome. Trailhead, I was going to hike the trail, but it rained all night. and It was just too wet. So. Too wet. How about a, that's, that's a great, that's a great story. Um, how about a, a quick safety tip? A lot of solo females are like, oh, scared. Even some solo guys. Um, maybe a safety tip. We talked about this a little bit earlier. but um... Well, a lot of people have different ideas when they're getting in and out of their van. For me, being a solo female, I don't necessarily want to advertise that I'm alone. And so I, except for when I'm parked, like we were at Peace, Love, and Vans and those kind of places, I generally don't use my sliding door. I like to use my driver's door because then they don't know who or what is in the back end of that van. Um, so I will actually exit and enter the van through the driver's door uh, or the passenger's door, depending on what kind of a mood I'm in. Because if you go out the passenger door, then they assume there's a man driving for you. <laughs> and you now I hate to say that, but, but it does true. give that impression. So that's fine. But, I already told you, probably one of my favorite tips is every time you get in the van, lock the door. I don't care if you're just driving to the grocery store. As soon as you get in the van, you just get in the habit of locking the door. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Um, let's just see if there's, um, we'll kind of wrap this up. Uh, slow transit times, says Marie, you're an inspiration. Thank you. I would totally you. agree with you. Uh, here's Sherry Ann and Mike saying uh, thank you. Great story. Um, and here's a question from Rosa. Uh, hello, the manufacturer does custom modifications uh, to their specs. Uh, so talking about Embassy RV, there are some variables, but it's mostly floor plan variables, right? Right. I mean, you get to choose your colors, but it's not unlimited. Um, it's still very much a produced van, but you have so much control over the color of your fabrics and you know how you put them together. Nobody's gonna tell you if you decide to put clashing fabrics together. That's your business, not theirs. Um, but really all their colors go together. Well, I don't think you could screw that up anyway. Yeah. But, and, and Wanda wouldn't let you anyway. <laughs> no, no, she, yeah, but Wanda's retiring at the end of the year, so. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no. So this is, um, so this, I'm sorry, uh, this is Steve. Uh, he says, surprisingly, <laughs> we just got <laughs> the post well, I have an empty barrel. So we'll, we'll, we'll save, save this for you at the eclipse. Um, that's surprisingly cool. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Donna's has a question here, Marie. Uh, Donna's wants to know, do you need to treat gray tanks? Do you have to limit toothpaste going down? Uh, FYI, I may have found my coffee soulmate. Um, awesome. Um, I'm not totally sure on that, but I think that, uh, you can probably rinse those bladders, but I was watching a video today from someone uh, might have been uh, Endless Adventure or whoever said something about he plugged his drain on his gray tank because he got coffee grounds down there and they clogged the tube uh, or the hose. And so I, I think it's going to be a good investment to get some sort of screen to go over that sink drain to make sure yeah. that things don't go down there because it's you got to got to work hard to keep stuff out of there. Yeah. And I would just add, you know, no food waste, no grease. I mean, these are sensitive systems, even though they're pretty robust. But uh, like, I don't even put any like coffee with cream down that. It goes into the toilet because I just don't want to um, spoil the gray tank. And on traditional systems like mine, um, there are the toilet chemicals you put in the, the gray tank as well to keep them fresh. 
Um, so that's a, that's a tip for you. Look at this. We got a $10 tip, Marie. Oh, sure. cool. Thank you, YouTube user. Appreciate that. Um, now I got to hit the corn whiskey. <laughs> I think I'll stick to bourbon, but it's actually not bad. Um, oh. Steve will be in charge of creating something surprisingly delicious for us. Um, I was going to say, maybe we'll have a Van Bury at Steve's in about a year after it's had a nice <laughs> age. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's so great. Well, we're at the top of the hour. Marie, just thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, I knew you'd be a hit. You have such a, you're such an inspiration. I just love people that are doing it. Um, you've been doing it a long time throughout your life, but you, you keep doing it. Now you're shifting gears again. And, and uh, it's just, you're an inspiration to me and, um, and so many others and just have a great story to share. So just uh, thank you again for joining us tonight. Well, thank you for having me, Scott. I do appreciate it. Absolutely. So we'll see um, y'all next Wednesday for another what's up Wednesday and Marie stay right there in the studio. Thank you again for watching everybody. What do I get with two piece of signs? Confetti. <laughs> nice. No. So journey on and peace be with you. We'll see you next week. Thank you.